Hello everyone, this is Dr. K here and today we're going to spend a few minutes discussing heart rate variability. Uh, this is a topic that I've been interested in now for a few months. I've done some extensive research and I'm always looking for new ways to quantify my own personal progress but also the progress of our patients. And this is a great objective biomarker that assesses the integrity of your central nervous system and your, your general readiness to handle stress on a day-to-day -day basis. So. Today we're going to discuss what is heart rate variability or HRV, why should you possibly consider monitoring HRV, and then if you're interested, how do you go about setting this up in, in a step-by-step -step process on how to test this on yourself. And so um, that'll be at the end of this presentation. We'll have actually a step-by-step -step process going through all of the intricate details of how to do this. And honestly, it's not very difficult. It's a very easy test to perform you're looking at about three minutes out of your day and that's it and the great thing is that you can do this at home so uh, what is heart rate variability HRV is by definition the physiological phenomenon of variation in the time domain between the R to R interval or the beat to beat interval so when you look at the diagram on the right here this is a classic EKG recording or electrocardiogram. This is typically what you would get done um, to assess the integrity of your cardiovascular system. And uh, on this specific diagram, you can see two individual heartbeats. And when we say the R to R interval, we're talking about those long spikes that you see with the R on top. And what we're looking for is variability or variation in the time between each individual heartbeat okay so it should vary and um, this is a great tool again it's a it's an objective biomarker that assesses the integrity of your central nervous system but more specifically of your autonomic nervous system and we're going to discuss that on the next slide the other reason why I like heart rate variability is that it's easy to monitor as a patient you do not have to come into a healthcare providers office to get this test done you can do it in the comfort of your own home. So it's an easy test to monitor daily. Again, it's a short test. You're looking at about three minutes out of your day, which is not too much to ask. Research shows that a higher HRV is indicative of a balanced autonomic nervous system and then subsequently overall health. And uh, we're gonna talk about all the details later, but this is performed on a scale of zero to 100. So ideally, you wanna shoot for a higher HRV, but more importantly, you wanna look at a baseline. So you wanna have multiple days in a row that shows, that shows you your HRV on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's more or less the averages that you're looking for, and not necessarily just the individual score for that day. Although that does have a, a time and place as far as information. So again, when we look at the autonomic nervous system, we're talking about the part of the nervous system that controls the things that you do not necessarily consciously control, like your heart rate, your blood pressure, your digestion. Um, these sort of things occur on their own. And what I mean by that is if you eat food, you're not necessarily consciously producing and secreting the necessary enzymes and, and whatnot to break that food down and absorb the nutrients. These things sort of just occur on their own. When you look, when you break down the autonomic nervous system into its subcomponents, you have a sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic, typically most people are gonna jump, they're gonna say the fight or flight response. So this is your stress response. This is essentially for survival mode. And typically you do not wanna be in this state on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, this is meant for uh, stress responses. If you have uh, you know something startle you or you're in a life-threatening situation you want this part of your nervous system to kick in it's more of a primitive part of your nervous system and you want that to kick in so you can uh, you can survive now when you look at parasympathetic activity this is primarily where we want to be on a day-to-day -day basis and this is your rest and digest system essentially this is where sleep will occur and recovery and healing and so forth we call it your re relaxation response so these are the two different aspects of your autonomic nervous system and checking your heart rate variability gives you a great window into how that autonomic nervous system is functioning and it even tells you which way are you leaning. Are you more towards the sympathetic response or are you more towards the parasympathetic response which is what we're shooting for. Now unfortunately with our lifestyles nowadays, poor diet, uh, stressful family life, stressful work life, um, 
people are starting to shift towards this increased sympathetic firing in long term it has pretty detrimental health effects so in the literature this is taken out of Stavs in 2003 these are a couple quotes from his paper um, this one first one says in fact loss of heart rate variability can indicate severe cardiovascular diseases and reliably predict poor outcome of such conditions so in other words if you have a myocardial infarction your HRV was low prior to it then your recovery from that will be uh, not as not as good and not as fast the second quote here says that there is general agreement that low heart rate variability is an unfavorable prognostic marker for cardiovascular diseases such as diabetic autonomic neuropathy hypertension myocardial infarction and heart failure so the research supports and shows how heart rate variability deals with some of these more severe health issues but you also got to take into consideration that we can use it as a marker to assess someone's health and uh, just day-to-day -day ability to handle stress and that's why I like it that's why I use it I use it personally for myself so why should you consider monitoring your HRV well first and foremost it's an easy way to monitor the integrity of your nervous system daily and it, you, you can then use it to determine how you're progressing in life so the examples that I like to give are if you're an athlete and maybe you're on a certain training regimen uh, if you're checking your HRV every day maybe one day you get a lower HRV you're leaning towards that increased sympathetic tone maybe that's a good day to incorporate an active recovery day or something that's not as strenuous or intense if you're just an average Joe and you're just uh, you know you're going to work and you're not really getting into lots of physical activity you're not really looking to, for performance enhancement or anything of that nature well then you can use your HRV to assess your ability to handle stress on that individual day in other words if you have a low HRV that day and you're more sympathetic dominant that's probably a good day to consciously try to control your ability to handle stress don't let things get to you uh, maybe pr practice parasympathetic stimulating exercises which we're going to talk about in future um, videos and and you go from there and that way you know this is not the day that I need to be super stressed out or maybe I need to uh, try to rest and recover and meditate uh, more today so this is applicable to everyone you know whether you're an athlete or you're just uh, you know you're just an average person so if you're interested in this which I hope you are because again I think it's an easy tool to use um, where do you start well you start by downloading the elite HRV app in the App Store so you can get it on your smartphone or your iPad it's a free app so you just download it there you search elite HRV that's the interface that you'll see pop up you're also going to need to purchase a Bluetooth wireless chest heart rate monitor and the one that's compatible with um, this app is the polar h7 so if you go to Google or go to Amazon, you can Google Polar H7 and you should be able to, to purchase this. You're looking at roughly $60 to $80, so it's not too, it's not too expensive. Um, if you do go with a, decide to go with a different brand, you need to ensure that it's both Bluetooth and compatible with that app. Okay? How do you monitor HRV? So once you set up your Elite HRV, you set up your account, um, you'll see this screen will pop up and every morning when you open up the app you'll see this screen where it says morning readiness and that's how you start the HRV test and you'll actually get reminders if you turn your notifications on on your phone it'll tell you okay remember to check your HRV today so here's how you go about doing this you want to check your HRV as soon as you wake up in the morning okay go to the restroom first and then check your HRV immediately after you want to check it in a seated position okay um, this ensures consistency in the testing so that's always a big deal you want to you want to check it around the same time um, so maybe not necessarily the same time of each day but if you get up go to the bathroom and then check it that's standard okay it's standardized check it in a seated position and so you're gonna go click the morning readiness and uh, you'll be able to begin the test so step-by-step -step instructions once you have the polar H7 chest monitor you're gonna attach that you're going to apply water over the full length of the sensor for conduction you're gonna sit in a comfortable position 
you're going to click that morning readiness uh, button on the Elite HRV app. The test will run for approximately three minutes. You'll see here on this picture, and I'll, I'll try to enlarge this on the video, this gives you your heart rate as well as your variability real time. Okay. What I would do is just close your eyes and relax, let the test run, it'll beep at the end, and then you'll be all set. Once you're finished, you're going to click the save button in the upper right hand corner, and then you can also add in your mood, your quality and quantity of sleep, as well as any physical activity that you had, and then you can click save again. Uh, that's this screen, I'll enlarge this one as well. And then the last part that you'll get to is once you go through the actual app, and I'll, I'll try to enlarge this one as well in the video and you'll be able to see the actual graph. It'll graph this, your HRV scores per day. So you can go back and keep track of, you know, what your HRV was over time. And uh, ideally you want to be in the green. If you're yellow or red, that means you're, you're too far one way or the other. Typically it's going to be towards the sympathetic side uh, and, and whatnot. Okay. So as a general overview, you want to record daily to establish a baseline. So it's not it's not so much important for you just to get one initial test and say you're good to go or or you're not good to go. You really want to have a baseline or an average. So you want to check this daily to to establish uh, some time. HRV is scored on a scale of 0 to 100, okay? And the higher the HRV, the more healthy and the more uh, balanced the nervous system is. So a higher score is ideal, but more importantly, a baseline needs to be established to determine your day-to-day -day readiness to handle stress. According to research, average HRV is about 53. So if you're 53 or higher, well then you are on the better side of average, uh, or the healthier side of average. But you need to use this as your own personal marker to assess your progress. So let's say you want to start a dietary plan, you want to start some physical activity program. You can use this over time. Check it daily and after a month you can see, has my HRV gone up? Has the average gone up? The true goal is to increase your own personal HRV baseline over time. Okay, And that's it. This is just a marker that you can use. Um, it gives you a better window. It's not like checking your weight. It gives you a real quantifiable biomarker to assess the integrity of your nervous system. And again, if, you're, if you score low on your HRV and you're leaning towards that increased sympathetic tone, like I mentioned earlier, if you're an athlete, maybe use an active recovery day. If you're just an average person, maybe uh, really focus on parasympathetic type exercises, meditation, breathing exercises, etc. Try to limit the amount of stress you get exposed to and change the way you handle and respond to stress. So, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope, uh, I hope I sparked a little bit of interest in this topic. Again, I, I check it on myself. I think it's a great tool. It's easy to use. You don't have to go to a healthcare provider to get this done. So please, follow these directions. This will be made available on our Facebook website, and you'll be able to get through the PowerPoint and see exactly how to set this up. Um, we'll be doing videos like this on different topics. Uh, in the future. So if you have anything you really want us to discuss, go ahead and just contact the office. We have all our information right here on this slide. And uh, you know, I'll be more than happy to try to talk about some of those topics that you're interested in. And uh, if you like this, please do us a favor, like our Facebook page, and uh, share this so that it reaches the masses. Okay? Send it to your friends. Uh, always remember guys, live life well.